So we wanted to talk it. about self love, and um, whether I know we touched on it in the last episode a little bit, but really going deeper, how do I stay in love? I know you talked about an affirmation. I can write, um, but even then, every day we have moments, right? You look at yourself in the mirror very superficially, and you know, oh, I don't love, I don't love what I see. Mm-hmm. Or you eat a meal and you're like, oh. Why did I, I do that I to myself? That. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Or you get a bad review from someone at yeah. work and you're like, oh, I could have done better. I hate myself. We're telling ourselves we hate ourselves much more mm-hmm. than we're telling mm-hmm. ourselves that we love ourselves. Yeah. How, do, how do we change that programming? Yeah, I want to add one additional thing because I think this is a good segue from the previous episode, right? I mean, the questions that we're asking is based on your answer. You said... Like, you know, self-love is a huge basis to self-realization, mm-hmm. yes, right? it is. So for that, like, we're trying to, like, ask these questions. So if you can elaborate a lot more on how to establish, like, you know, maybe, like, in a day-to-day life of how, whatever should they ask, that would be very helpful, I think, for someone, including myself. Yeah. So some of the things that I always talk about is a journey starts with a single step. Mm. You know, so that's why I was saying the first step could be you writing down mm-hmm. that, that uh, you know, I love myself, loving things about myself, even if I don't agree with it. Mm-hmm. Okay, that would be one thing. Mm-hmm. But there's lots of things we can do. We can make a choice in our life that might help us health-wise. Mm-hmm. And, and I'm talking about simple choices. So what we do is we take a simple choice and we work that simple choice. Let's say I have a type of food that's, that's causing me problems mm-hmm. when I eat it. Well, I cut that food out or cut it back and cut it off. And I use my affirmations every day. Mm-hmm. And I do that till I'm comfortable. And there's going to be days that I'm not comfortable. Mm-hmm. But what happened is I did an act of self-love. Mm-hmm. See, acts of self-love come more than me just telling myself that I love myself. An act of self-love is me doing something in some way that my body recognizes Mm -hmm. that there's love involved in this, Mm -hmm. making that body's life better, Mm -hmm. you know, healthier or whatever. It may be you going out and walking Mm -hmm. a quarter of a mile every day or a half a mile, Mm -hmm. some, some way physically. So we can do physical things, we can, we can change our diet, we can look at our language. Hmm. We can look at our language. And, you know, I've known people that, that couldn't say that they love themselves. They felt so unworthy yeah. and so angry with themselves, themselves about what they had done, that it's best if you're in that position that you do something physical in a way that that spins you. That spins. That that spins your energy. Spins. Spins. Takes it and, and takes your your a positive spin. Your body energy, and um. just wears you out. If if you're angry, get a buy a punching bag, huh. and okay. just wear the thing out. Go chop up a bunch of wood. Right. And um, as you do this, when you, when you drain that energy out, that removes as much energy for that negative concept. Mm. It reduces it and allows you a foothold to come in with something that is better. Mm. To say something better. It has more power and more strength to it. Mm-hmm. So subtle, how do you define love? The definition of love for me is, is love is a state of being to me. It is an, it's also a creation of the universe. Anything that's created is created in love. We're the ones that turn stuff around and, and call it something that's less than what it is. So love is a state of being. I'm being a certain way or I'm feeling a certain way. For me, when I'm in that love, it's a pervasive feeling that runs all through me of joy and gratitude 
and just a feeling of, of wholeness. For me, that's, that's what that, that love feels like. Another way that I get in touch with, with something that is very loving within me is I think of one of my children being born. Uh, for me, when I saw my children born, it's hard to express the amount of love that I felt for, that, for my wife and my child at that moment that my child was born. 100%, but what about somebody that's not there, that doesn't have an experience that they can anchor around? Yeah. Somebody that's you know, really struggling, for example, with me, defining love through the lens of acceptance was very powerful. Mm -hmm. Right, it doesn't have to be anything different, right? Love is just accepting whatever is. However somebody is, whoever they yes. are, whatever they want to express themselves, the way that, you know, the plant, uh, that dairy doesn't, you know, resonate well with me. It's just like, okay, well, I'm going to love my body by accepting. Right, accepting reality. something else, yeah. 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 Well, to me, unconditional love. I mean, that, the whole driver of what I try to do in my life, in my spiritual attainment, is is unconditional love. And this unconditional love is total acceptance. It accepts all things. But where I was coming from, if I'm someone who is really just struggling with life in yeah. general, taking that type of concept at first is, is they're struggling anyway. But what I had to do is I had to take actionable steps in my life. Mm -hmm. That's the way I did it. I started taking actionable steps that were good for me. Mm -hmm. So I looked at my life and I didn't love myself. I hated myself for what I was doing to my family and to, to everything, everybody else. I look back at my life and I thought, I'm a horrible person. Mm -hmm. You know, my childhood, I, I hated my childhood. I hated my parents. I hated everything, you know, but what happened is I took that action of doing something, taking that step. Mm -hmm. For me, it was, it was made, I made that choice. And that's what you have to do. It doesn't matter who you are or what, what your situation is. is making that decisive choice that I need to do something with my life. It's, what I'm doing is not working. And for a lot of people, it's, there's a real struggle with coming to terms with the fact that I'm the one that's causing this mm -hmm. and wanting to blame everything else. That's where I was at. I blamed yeah. everything else, everybody else for my life. It's taking responsibility. Taking responsibility is for paramount everything for everything. Happening. But I was not able to do that at first. Yep. What brought you that shift? The shift for me was, was almost losing my family. Okay. If we talk about the very, the primal, <laughs> the primal first thought is, I'm fixing to lose my family. Mm -hmm. Wow. Gotcha. So, you know, um, you make the decision consciously to love yourself and, um, you know, you're starting to take responsibility, but, you know, this reality, the way it is, it's act. The results of your actions take a while to show up. Um, do you have any guidance on how do you stay in that loving self and be patient with yourself? Is, was that something you had to learn as well as patience with yourself as you're letting go of those patterns? I had to learn how to overcome fear mm -hmm. because all of that is built on, was built on a, a mountain of fear, you know, like I'm looking at my life and um, I'm trying to do things the all, way I've always done. Nothing is working. Mm -hmm. I'm about to lose everything. I'm a disaster. Mm -hmm. I mean, my body was a disaster. The horse was bucking. The horse was... <laughs> the horse was used to what it was doing, but it was, yeah, it was bucking and everything else. Right. But I made the choice that I wanted to save myself and save, save my family. Now, that had nothing to do with me. Getting realized or anything. It, yeah, it, gotcha. it, it was, a, that was a shift in my consciousness mm -hmm. saying that where I've been is not where I want to go. Yeah. So every human being has to make that choice. Mm -hmm. 
if you go into rehab, they're gonna they're gonna put that choice in front of you and tell you you're gonna have to shift. You have to shift your perspective. The twelve step 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 program. I'm yes. not an ex expert in that, but I do know that you would have to shift. You would have to shift, mm -hmm. and then have a it's set not of a one step program. <laughs> it's not a one step program. No. It starts with one step. It starts with one step. If I have to follow through. Yes. So. For me, it was key. The body, the body is a key to a lot of this, hmm. because the food that we've been eating is poison. Mm -hmm. the, what we've been drinking is poison. What we're watching on TV is poison. Mm -hmm. Schooling is poison. The whole system has had poisoned us into thinking that we have no responsibility in anything that we're doing. Yeah. And that's, to me, that was, that's the basic lie. That I'm not a responsible party, that there's something else that's oh, responsible for where I'm at, or there's something else that's gonna save me. Wow. Those are the two concepts that the control system, I call it a control system or whatever it is out there that it has put in place oh. to capture humanity into a lower, frequency, which is through the food, through the drink, through the, the media, through everything that we see, is to, to dumb us down to the point that we can't see what's happening. So at my crisis point, I looked at the world and I knew this is not working for me. I have to change. And then I made that decision that my body, I'll start with that. Mm -hmm. And I'll tell you what, what spurred that on. Yes. Um, my friend and I were driving by a uh, martial arts school. And this is before I was in martial arts. And I looked over at him and I says, you think that would be helpful? <laughs> he said, yeah, that would probably, that would be helpful. So we went down and joined up. And I had my first class, and I thought I was going to die. <laughs> <laughs> I think we've all had our own you know, dying experiences. Okay, 50 jumping jacks, and I'm like, <sighs> you know, I do like five. You know, okay, 25 push-ups. You know, I, I eke out one. You know, that type of deal. But I just, that was just a verification to me. Look at, mm. where, look at what, where you were at in your life. And then at the same time, I have these instructors that are, that are building me up. You know, they're, they're saying, you can do this. You can do this. We'll help you. And I'm like, okay. You know, I'm kind of unconvinced at first. <laughs> but I come back, and little by little, by taking that approach that I've always taken, I guess there was one thing I did learn was to be simple and to take one step at a time. It may be the order. You're an order mm -hmm. soul too. Yes. That I knew there was an order to this mm -hmm. and I watched the order and I figured it out that I had to do this before I do this, before I do this. I had to get good at this before I could do this, before I could do this. So what I'm telling you is I focused on these new concepts of becoming something better than I was. Mm -hmm. But I was still, I mean, even in that, I was still uh, not, I was still hating my parents. Gotcha. I was still thinking something else somewhere was doing something to me. Yeah. Yeah. But as I changed myself and my chemistry in the body mm -hmm. and continued to get the chemicals out of my body, mm -hmm. I was like two, I think I was 207 or 217. Like body weight? Body weight, and I dropped to 145. Wow. In six months. Six months? Six, six months. months. Ten pounds a wow. month. That's yeah. a lot. Yeah. Yeah. And it's not like you're on like a crazy diet or anything. It's no. just you changed your, your order. It's much. just me changing my order yeah. and being serious about what I'm doing. Hmm. I mean, I had that much drive in me. I didn't want to lose, I didn't want to lose my family. So that's where the will... That, that was where my will was at. I love my... 
I love my wife and my children, and, and it was very hard. I was hard on them, mm -hmm. really hard on them. So tell us how, if you can elaborate more on how loving yourself and bringing order into your life not only change yourself, but tell us, explain us more going back to Shraddha's question, how it affected the relationships that followed. Well, at first, as with anything, mm -hmm. when I first started going and going to, to martial arts school and training, my wife was looking around the corner. She's like, is he really, you know, is, is, is going he going really going to do stuff? this? Yeah. You know, is this, is this really happening? And, uh, you know, I just kept going. Hmm. You know, so after... After a while, she's like, you need to go. Oh, you know, wow. You need to go. You need, you need to go work out. You need, you need to go up to martial arts school. Because what was happening is, of course, I was, I was improving myself and I was improving my life. Mm -hmm. And I was, becoming, I was becoming a different person. I was changing me. I was transforming into a new you. Through, through that practice. As my family saw me transforming into this person that was becoming someone who was beginning to show signs of, of love and consistency in his life, I mean, it changed everything. You know, we still had a rough spots because we're human beings and she was, I don't blame her, she was very angry at me for a long time. And I knew that I had to prove myself. And I didn't whine about it mm -hmm. because I knew what I'd put, I'd put her through and put my family through. Yeah. So I went at it. But so a sense of humility there. Yeah. Pride would keep, yeah, when I look on my own life, you know, it's the pride that, no, 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 no I'm justified, I'm right. Yeah, ego. Right? And so therefore it's like yeah. I, I can stand behind the patterns versus just, no. Mm -hmm. I'm going to There's, shift these things, and yeah. thank you for the awareness. Thank you for yeah. giving that perspective. I was unaware prior, right? Yeah. Yeah. But to be able to handle that on an emotional level, is that's the journey. Yeah. The, the interesting thing about, about what we were doing through the school I was in, and I, I've taught in lots of schools now, and I, all of them are a little different. But at Iron School, we, had a, we did have a deep spiritual connection. Hmm. in the school and it was talked about in the school and beyond that we were also we were fighting all the time hmm. so we were an actual full contact fighting school and the thing that's interesting about about fighting or sparring or whatever you do is learning how to control the fear hmm. removing the fear from what's happening and learning, you know, learning to control yourself and be in the moment. So I learned real quick that if I was not in the moment and just flowing, I got hurt. Yeah. <laughs> There's no choice. Boy, doesn't yeah. it sound like every type of life? Yes. It does. If I'm it's not actually present in the moment, I get yes. hurt. <laughs> I get hurt. Like, at least the worst part, life would be blur. Right. Best case scenario. Right. Yeah. Look, it's not for everybody, but yes. it's it's all I'm trying to say here is for me, it was me learning how to control my emotions mm -hmm. because I had to put myself under emotional control. I had to go into no thought mm -hmm. in the moment without any fear. Mm -hmm. The only way you, you can't get to no thought in fear. Hmm. You have to go into no thought. <laughs> when you go into no thought, you can do things that you never. Is no thought for you? Is that a new, neutral state? It's a. It's a. There's no thought. In, I mean, for me, I got to the point after year after years now. Not, you know, this is a, as a as a practicing black belt. I got to where I could go out and I could spar or fight with anybody, and and uh, there was just no thought in it. I mean, I knew where the punches were coming. I knew where, I knew the, where the punch was coming before it came. Hmm. Nice. So, in a way, when you started doing martial arts, it was your 
gateway into spirituality because yes. you had an activity that you could relate with that was then teaching you those tools of being in the moment, being responsible, being present. And, yep. um, you know, we all want gratification, right? That's a big part of mm -hmm. how our brain works in this reality. So is that a step for people who are starting out in self-love and the journey and all that is taking a pattern that's not serving you or some, an activity that isn't serving you well, recognizing that then replacing it with something else that so that you don't is go a, back. That's a good step for you if, because of the way we have been in this box, mm -hmm. what we're doing is we're stepping into a process with things that we can understand, that the body can understand and processes that we understand. You know, I talk about a lot of things now that are, what would you, what would you call it? Esoteric or very, woo-woo mm -hmm. <laughs> oriented energies yeah. um, that are hard to relate to when you're first your first awakening or you're first trying to make a change so what i'm telling you is i didn't start out doing that right. i mean i i've changed my body i changed my emotions you know i got control of my emotions um, i was practicing love because i was i was serving in our, in our community, we weren't a straight fighting school where you're mm -hmm. going to go out and learn MMA and you're going to go fight in a cage or do whatever like that. <laughs> we were a transformational system. Yes. Michael and I's karate schools or our martial arts schools were transformational systems for personal oh. transformation, transformation through the processes the whole that we used. Built around to turn it, it was built around that. We, weren't, the we didn't care about the... It was all about the spin. Yeah. Shift. So, Avi, have you experienced something that has been a negative pattern that you've spun around with a positive pattern? Yeah, I mean, kind of like also like, I don't want to say like a maybe, maybe we can talk about a more deeper example. Like I can talk about my daily life these days at least yeah. is where, um, let's say if I have a lot of work or a lot of work related stress, it affects my relationship with my child. Like, you know, the time and the patience that I have towards asking him to come towards the dinner table, for example, right? That changes and I'm starting to, I mean, I recognize the difference of like the work stress and how it can bring it and affect my relationship with my child. And obviously, let's say if I'm like yelling at him versus me, like, you know, trying to convince him, it of course affects the quality of my relationship mm -hmm. with my child, right? And, and that's where I think not only that awareness matters, but also like a recognition that some of these habits that we go through in our daily work life has the potency to affect if we don't um, approach it with the level of awareness and consciousness. But yeah, I mean, that's a smaller example, but we can dive, maybe dive in on it deeper. What's something specific? Like, what did you shift? Because it seems like yeah. a good broad stroke. Yeah, so that's a good question. So how did you shift? Um, so looking at the bigger picture, like you know, thinking about it from my son's standpoint, like, you know, why is he not listening if you're shouting versus you're trying to explain things, right? So because right. you're not at this, his wavelength of, okay, how can I speak with him in a way where my message is coming across, not in a way that I want to, but in a way where he intends to listen to, right? right? And that can only happen if you are more aware. Yes. And if you're not being clouded by you thinking about work or like, you know, trying to like, you know, like just handle the entire day, like you know, having that shift, like, you know, and the, the only way you can have that shift in, in your thought process to what uh, John was saying is it all comes down to like, you know, being aware, mm -hmm. being more conscious and taking responsibility. When you take responsibility, like, how you know, what, what, is, what is the end goal here? Do I want my kid also to be grumpy just like the way I'm being grumpy or right. they want him to be at peace and in, in, as, a, as yeah. in the whole process I'm also at peace. How do we approach this? And that level of confidence will only happen if you are an observer. Right. right. And it's a learning process of course you have wow. a good day, bad days. But... Thank you for sharing that. Sure. Coming back to uh, the question that started this which was you know spiritual to be 
spiritually deeper in your practice or you know your life you need um, self-love and you need to be able to express that because that is your gateway or step mm -hmm. one into mm -hmm. unconditional love um, is that also why a lot of people you know struggle with manifestations and all that because it's you know we don't have that sense of responsibility for ourselves because you know Abhi wrote a future vision uh, and I know some of us did that activity in his in three months his timeline was much more accelerated and people always ask that I'm being spiritual I'm doing everything <laughs> for some of us it can take years and you feel like you're just stuck in that is there's that does that tie back to self-love and you know for you was it intentional love because you created a future vision without recognizing that's what you were doing when you made that shift after that dark night of the soul Right after the dark night of the soul, I, d I didn't have, I didn't know where I was headed. Mm -hmm. I really didn't. I, you know, I, I, it's more of survival. if I saw this now back then, I'd be, <laughs> you've got to be kidding me. <laughs> <laughs> you know, but isn't it beautiful though? It's, it really is beautiful. You know, the whole thing has been beautiful. Um, you know, at the same time, you know, I didn't talk to that, but you know, at the same time I'm doing, doing these things, mm -hmm. you know, as I'm getting all the chemical crud out of my body and I'm beginning to to uh, to work on myself and I'm serving others in some regard I mean I begin to wake up mm -hmm. and I begin to to start asking questions mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. you know and, e and even a question I had even before before that part is I asked the universe and, and I've told people this before you know I asked the universe to show me the truth of reality because my life when I, at that point that I asked that question, my life was, to me, was so bad <laughs> and was so wrong because how could, you know, I was working with people who, who did absolutely nothing and went all the way to the top and people who worked themselves to death and were really good employees and never yeah. got anywhere in the organization. So true. Yeah. And, you know, I knew it was the politics, but I, you know, the politics was a big component of it. But I saw all these disparities. Mm -hmm. I saw the disparity in, in the world, mm -hmm. you know, the government. Mm -hmm. and, and this was for me activating, cleaning myself out. Mm -hmm. My energy level, of course, my vibration's going up, and I'm beginning to open up to different possibilities. Whereas, if you're not in that way, I was in a very contained box of fear and dread and hate. So once I broke out of that box, the question that I asked before that, you know, my guides were waiting, <laughs> I guess, for that to happen. You know, and I started getting the information, you know, little stuff started flowing in uh, at the same time, I'm in my martial arts training. I'm starting to, to starting to meditate mm -hmm. and and do, you know, starting to do a lot of rabbit holes. Mm -hmm. I mean, I went down every rabbit hole I could find, mm -hmm. st studying, because I just I wanted to know the truth. Mm -hmm. I was so tired of of the place that I'd gotten to. And I know people will relate to this because there's a lot of people in that state right now yeah. that were so sick of what's going on in the world right now and the situation. But as I broke out of that into this higher vibration state, into this, this intent, here I am. I'm having the intention of, of healing myself, healing my family, and healing all of my students mm -hmm. that I'm working with. And what happened is I went from a totally self-serving